What's up, people? Welcome back. Well, we are going to take a look shortly at the OpenSUSE latest release from OpenSUSE or SUSE 13.1. Now, if you are a beginner, I strongly suggest that you take a look at the OpenSUSE.org website. From what I understand, this is a distribution from the team at OpenSUSE that promotes this uh, distribution for everyone, including developers, beginners, advanced users, ultra geeks, as they say, etc. I'm not sure if this is uh, one I would pick as my top choice for beginners. It's not that difficult to learn, but this is a loaded distribution, distribution meaning that this is not a lightweight uh, distribution. That's not necessarily good or bad. It's just that if you are uh, coming to this from a Windows environment that's for the very first time, this has the, the potential to be uh, overwhelming. But uh, let's take a look at the Genome or GNOME desktop environment for OpenSUSE 13.1. All right, well, this is the default desktop here for OpenSUSE 13.1, the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, this is apparently the default uh, screensaver. So let's see, it's telling me to go up. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, one thing before I continue, the installation process, uh, this appears to have an automatic installer. So if you are a beginner, installing this should not be an issue. All right, so it's asking me to type in my password, tap unlock, okay, there we go. Now, if, if you are looking for a very clean, uncluttered desktop, you are probably going to love this. Um, one thing about the switch from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, the GNOME Shell desktop environment. For a lot of people, this came as a traumatic shock. At the time, I had a choice between this and Ubuntu Unity. I chose to go with Ubuntu Unity because as a dual booter, I found Ubuntu Unity to be a little bit easier than this, and for some people, much, much easier than, than using something like this. So is the GNOME environment, the current GNOME environment, something for beginners? Let's take a look and see what we have here. So here we have a very clean desktop. We have a panel here at the top. If I right click on a panel, you can't add or do uh, anything to it. This is one thing that I miss in GNOME too. Of course, you really can't do this in Ubuntu Unity. But that being said, let's take a look here and see what we have. If we right click on the desktop, you have two choices, settings. Let's take a look at that one first. All right, this would be something similar to the control panel that you would have in Windows. This is going to be self-explanatory here. Let's try uh, double-clicking sound. There we go. Let's try uh, one more thing here and go back to settings. Let's see, go to Bluetooth. Okay, apparently it's a single click and not a double click. All right, fair enough. Right-click again, let's go to change background. All right, you can go to the background here, and not much about uh, four different backgrounds. One thing that is missing here, in my opinion, is a shortcut here that should say, go online to download more wallpapers or something to that effect to make it easier, really, for both beginners and advanced users to customize your desktop. All right, let's go to the top right. Looks like we have three shortcuts here. Let's go to the arrow. All right, we have a sound bar. It looks like my username. Click that. All right, log out and three choices here. All right, cancel or restart power off. Go back to the arrow here. This is apparently lock the screen. Okay, so I'm going to click and hold and drag this up. All right, easy enough. Unlock. Okay, let's go to power and we have the same thing. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, let's go to here. All right, settings, a nice little shortcut. Let's get out of it. Let's go to the third icon, which is the sound. Now, this has apparently the same uh, drop down shortcut. I don't understand this. Uh, why should all three be the same? You would. This seems like a waste of space. But that's just just my personal opinion. It's certainly user friendly. I was expecting something different. But that being said, let's move on. Okay, the clock is in 24-hour format. Left click. 
uh, date and time settings hopefully this should be easy to change the format okay yes it is a.m. p.m. and let's see dialogue is locked unlocked okay password Automatic time and date requires internet access. Automatic time zone. Yeah, why don't we just keep those on? Okay. All right, so again, as I said, a very clean desktop. Let's go to activities. We left click that. Now, this is something where when I first saw this, it looks really kind of slick, but it's it just never seems quite finished. You have some shortcuts here, such as Firefox, and of course, you can use this in Windows if you want to. Okay, let's go to Rhythm Box while that is loading. And we'll see how long this takes. All right, there's Rhythm Box. Go back to Activities. Now, of course, you can drag these to these workspaces here. For example, if I go back to Firefox, see if that loads. Yeah, it's running a little bit slow, it appears. All right, well. These are your different workspaces here. Yeah, I'm not sure why, why Firefox is taking that long, but these are the shortcuts here. You can type in to where you need to go here. For example, if I wanted to go, Firefox is already running but not responding. Yes, I know that. All right, let's get out of that. All right, getting back to the activity activities here. As I said, you have various shortcuts here. You have a nice little search uh, bar here. For example, if, if I wanted to go to the control panel, you can type in control. You have a couple options here. Uh, YAST stands for, I believe, stands for a yet another setup tool. If you click that, of course, this needs password. That. Let's go to software management. All right, this is where you can uh, download software, delete software, uh, change your settings. Uh, it appears here. All right, you have your find search bar here. Install seven pre-selected packages. Now this is highlighted here, so I'm assuming this is important. Let's click that. All right, you if you install this, you will need to install this. So you can play your Flash or YouTube, your music and video. I won't do it now for the purpose of this demonstration, but this is where you can search for uh, specific pieces of software. Now this, I don't think this will have everything. If you are using Ubuntu, this may not have all the packages as you would have in, in Ubuntu. Some things should be the same. For example, if I type in Banshee Media Player, it's here. Uh, let's see, if I type in a certain screencaster such as Kazam, it is not here. So again, you may have to do some search on how to install a PPA if you wish to install Kazam. There are some uh, options up here such as file configuration and repositories and this, this is where you can add repositories to download something like, like Kazam and I'm assuming uh, Kazam is compatible with OpenSUSE. Alright now the one thing I don't like about this is it doesn't have a filter by categories. For example, if I click activities and go to here way at the bottom, this is going to bring all the applications, okay? Now now this is fine. You can, you know, scroll up and down, but it should have a filter setting here by category, for example, applications by internet category, sound and video and, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't have it. So as it's down, as it stands right now, this particular desktop distribution of OpenSUSE, I can't really recommend this for beginners. It wouldn't be that difficult to figure out, but this would not be my first choice. Uh, as far as having a clean desktop, it certainly is clean. And the one thing that's kind of bizarre, having what appears to be three shortcuts here, but each doing the same thing seems like a waste of space, in my opinion. Well, that's it. This is my look at the uh, GNOME desktop version of, Ob of OpenSUSE 13.1. Next up, I think I'll take a look at the KDE version of this, and that's probably going to be a little bit more beginner-friendly, Windows-ish Windows -ish friendly if you are coming from a Windows machine. 
All right, well, that's it for this, for my take on OpenSUSE 13.1, the GNOME Desktop Edition. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And as always, I will catch all of you sometime in the future.